Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Big G, your host, and today I'm bringing you a layout update, a special run session that we had yesterday with a close friend of mine, and then also where in the world I've been for the last six weeks. So six weeks ago, I got something that's been going around for the last couple of years. Didn't really get that bad. It was like a bad cold. Right about the time I was getting over that, my wife brought home a cold from her work and I got sick with it. Took me a couple of weeks to get over that. I've still got a little bit of a lingering cough, but nothing major. I've got some dogs walking down the end of the hall, so if you hear them clicking, I'm sorry for that in the video. And then also on top of all of that, my daughter got sick right as I was getting over it. So I kind of tried to stay out of the training room because I didn't want to have to come in here and disinfect everything and all of that. So I kind of isolated the training room off from all of us so that I didn't have to worry about too many germs being in here. Yes, I've kind of cleaned in here, but for the most part, I stayed away so that I didn't have to worry about germs being everywhere on surfaces and all of that. So stayed out of the training room for that. I did wind up... Um, I was almost ready for a video whenever I did get sick with everything, but I'm better now. Feel great. Didn't get too bad uh, to start with, but let's go ahead and turn the camera around and see what we got going on in the training room. All right, on the last update, we were talking about this section here and getting it forested, putting the new trees in, and then adding some of the buildings. So let's go ahead and take a look down through here, see what all we've done. I've got some weathering done on the buildings. Now that little bay door right there behind the trailer, it was already done, but I went ahead and I've weathered up the buildings. I've got the roof on them weathered. I've got the sidings done. I've got some drips coming down from the guttering. And I went ahead, I've not really touched up this parking lot yet. I've got a few more things to do real quick and I've got to, um, finish some gaps up underneath the building but that parking lot will be getting the same kind of treatment that I did with the parking lot over here. I've got some uh, stains on it that I've put in for heavy traffic coming through and then as you can see I've got the details up for the sanding tower, the fueling and water. I've got some barrels out there. need to add some people and I want to add a couple lights to that. Speaking of lights, all three of these buildings over here are lit. Now, I will be turning lights off here shortly and we'll take a look at that. But I've got the stains done. I've got what appears to be water flowing um, from heavy rains out onto the concrete and staining that up. Some stains coming off of the raised surface there. I also put a little ladder back here so that they could get up and down from the platform when they need to service the engines that are coming in. Also in that building, I also have the pits. I think they were from Pico, if I'm not mistaken. But they've got the pits in there so that they can get up underneath the engines when they go in for engine service. I'm planning on adding a few more details into the buildings, like some racks, uh, maybe have some spare parts or something in there. But for the most part, I'm really happy with the way the stain on the concrete came out, um, just showing the high traffic areas. And as you can see, the roofs I've went through, they're not pristine white anymore. They are actually stained up pretty well, like the way they turned out. I'm uh, planning on doing this on the coal mine and the hardware store, just hadn't taken the time to do that just yet, but that is something further along. Uh, maybe after the scenery gets done that I can play with, because you know a layout is never done. But this is what I've pretty much worked on. Without further ado, let's take a look at some of that run session that we had yesterday, and I'll get the lights turned off, and then I'll bring you back and let you see what the lights look like in the buildings. I 
got the lights off and the building lights turned on. It is somewhat dark into the layout room, but as you can see, um, you can still see pretty good at nighttime. It gets even better, but you can see that the buildings are lit up. And as you can tell, I still need to get up underneath the buildings and do a little bit of work, but pretty much worked on the bleed through. So in the dark, the buildings are completely um, lit up without any bleed through on the walls or the ceilings. Still need to work a little bit on the hardware store and um, the coal mine. I've got a little bit of bleed through that I still need to work through on those. But for the most part, it looks pretty good over here. Just need to finish those gaps up underneath that building. Let's take a look at the rest of the yard buildings and see what we got. Like I said, I'd like to add some lights up on the platform there just to help with the lights coming through on the engine shed. But I've also need to add a little bit more plaster work or um, putty or something up underneath the buildings on um, this one and this one over here. You can't really tell it too much on that one, but in between the car bay doors, I've got a little bleed through under the building, so I just need to add some putty or some plaster, like I said, and then kind of blend that in just so that it doesn't look like it's sitting on an uneven surface, which it kind of is at the moment. I tried to get it as flat as I could, but with plaster work, it always winds up having a few little minor dips in it. And that just so happened to be right where the building was sitting that one of the dips showed up. But you can see that the lights are good in there. I've got all the walls and ceilings painted. So no bleed through. And even got the doors painted so that they don't bleed through. Because on these kits, the plastic is a little thin. And on the white plastic, it usually will bleed through unless you paint both sides. But I like the overall look of it. I'm planning on adding some parking lights. I did wind up, I think on the last update, told you that I did not have the gravel poured back there by the uh, track stops. I've got those in, or track bumpers. I've got the gravel in around it. But I need to just add some parking lights and some uh, lights overall to the scene. And I definitely want to add some lights in the yard. Um, I was thinking about making my own, but the bad thing about it is, is those lights do not give off a whole lot. I mean, they do really well, but I'm thinking when it's really dark in here, I'm not going to be able to read road numbers uh, on the cars. And that's going to be kind of a crucial part when I'm playing. I mean, I need, I'll know what the car looks like. I'll know what car is going where. But when you get that car card and it says you got a rail box that's going, I'm going to kind of need to know which one of those two rail boxes I'm pulling, unless I'm pulling them all to the same industry. But more than likely, I'll have a couple rail boxes in the yard and I'll just need to know which ones I'm pulling and need to be able to identify them. I mean, is it that rail box that's really faded that would be hard to see in the dark? Would it be this one here or one that's really sun faded and bleached or sun bleached? Don't know. And that's why I want to make sure that my yard lighting is really well. But as you can tell, the tracks are on one and a half inch centers. So there's not a whole lot of lighting I can probably do in between the tracks. So that'll be something that I am definitely going to be playing around with and seeing what I can come up with. But overall, I do like the way the yard turned out so far. A little bit more work there, and then we will continue the progress onto the other end of the on the other end of the yard into the scenery work, which will be more rock work, which most of you guys and girls really like on the channel. And I've already done a rock work tutorial, so I won't be going and showing you that work. I'll just show you the finished product when it comes out. But let me flip the camera around and I'll give you a chance to see a little bit more of that run operation yesterday. And I'll show you what uh, my future plans are.
minutos. <risos> Another part of this update is I've actually got artwork hanging up on the wall. Let's take a closer look and see what we've got. I have the Daylight Southern Pacific engine here. I've actually got that for the layout. I've got it a little crooked in the frame here as far as what it goes, but it's straight on the wall. Got that painting. I saw it at the National InScale Convention in Nashville last year. Fell in love with it. Had to have it. I've also got this one over here of the Southern Crescent. Um, want to get that in in scale and have it on the layout. It's another steam engine that I really like. Just love the color scheme of both of those paintings and both those engines as well. Then my wife and daughter surprised me with this goodie for Christmas. This was actually made by my daughter uh, through her Cricut skills and her designs. So fell in love with that. They uh, had been sneaking into the room to try to find my golden spike to see when my golden spike was struck. And they saw that it was in 2020. So they made this for me and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you girls so much um, for taking the time to study and be in the layout room even when I'm not here. So means the world to me, and I greatly appreciate it. And of course, I had to hang it above all my railroad memorabilia or artwork. And to me, the Big G sign is probably my greatest piece of artwork that I have. And it, like I said, it's from my daughter. means the world to me, and thank her so much. So we're at the end of the yard and this is where the future progress will be. I've kind of showed this in previous videos, but for those new to the channel, I figured I'd share with you. I've got a rock wall coming in, a farm planned up on the top up there. I've also got a food factory right here on these two lines that are taped up right here. I'm planning on having some stand-in buildings for right now until I get to the point where I can actually put my scratch building to use and make something substantial, make it look like a good food factory. I've also got my reversing line taped off right now. That's just because of all the plaster work that's gonna be happening. This line here, along with the main line, will be getting taped probably later today and some of that being worked on. Then I've also got this red freight transfer building. It will be sitting here for the time being until I figure out what factory I want in there or what manufacturing I want to happen with the railroad's um, help. Then I'll be having a mountain that will pretty much block most of the view of where the buildings are all the way across to where the curve it, uh, pretty much starts to turn back on itself. Then I've got a bridge scene that's planned from about right here over to, well, actually, sorry, from right here over to where that's at. Now, that doesn't look like a whole lot, but I am standing about six to seven feet away from it. So we are looking at a large bridge, and that will be in a big ravine with a waterfall about where the tape measure is falling into that big valley. You can kind of see the bents that I have in place, but... That's going to be a nice little scene right there. That's my signature scene. I've got it in my head, but I've not put it onto the layout yet. So without further ado, let's take a look at some more stuff. <laughs> 